What you guys got another video? This is the mini PC that everyone has been waiting for, including myself. It's the Minis Forum MS A1. This means it has a Ryzen processor inside here, and this is the standard CPU socket on this mini PC. This is everything you can get inside the kit. You've got your kettle cable, which is your power cable, your HDMI cable, uh, some sort of tool here. Uh, it's like a key grabbing tool for your keyboard, but there's no keyboard here. You've got your user manual, and also you've got your power brick. This is the power brick that is going to be powering the mini PC itself. The output for this is 19 volts, and it's 12.63 amps at 239.97 watts. So we'll take a closer look at the wattage on this when it's under load. You can see here we do have an actual adapter here. This is for an SSD in case you want to use one of the M.2 slots to convert to an SSD. You can do by using this comes in the kit as well. I'll show you that a little bit later on as well. And then we also have the mini PC itself. Now, it's not like your standard mini PC. So let's take a closer look at the mini PC itself. So the mini PC itself has got a pretty decent spec to it, as you would expect. Got some ventilation here on the top. On the front, we have that power button. We also have that 3.5 millimeter audio jack uh, combo. And also we have a type A uh, USB 2.0 and two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports on here as well. So they're what we have on the front. We have a little bit of ventilation here. I will tear this down a little bit later on. Uh, nothing on the side here, just their logo, and nothing on this side here apart from a serial number. Uh, on the back, this is where all the main ports are. So just above the ports, we have that expansion area here to allow air to come out of the mini PC itself. Then below that, on the left-hand side, we have two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN ports here. We also have next to that, we have a DP port. Now this DP port is 4K at 144 hertz. It does support that. And we also have a HDMI port right next to that as well. And that supports 4K at 120 hertz. So we're getting multi-monitor support here. We do have a Type-C port here as well. That's data and DP as well. Plus we have uh, next to that another Type-A uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2 port and another Type-A USB 2.0 port on there as well. So we do also have that Oculink here. And this is going to be great for an external graphics card. I will make a video separate to this and I'll show you how this works where we can actually use an external GPU. I've already bought the actual external unit to go with this and I'll show that in another video. And we have that DC in jack as well on the back. Now on the bottom we have anti-slip rubber feet and some ventilation and the screws there are what you need to remove to gain access to the actual unit. This used to be a simple easy access on the previous version of this but this new one you have to remove screws to gain access the minis forum msa1 these are the specs it's the amd Raphael phoenix you can see cpu is the ryzen 7 8700g which is a full socketed cpu as well the chipset is amd a600 and we also have the gpu which is the radian navi free graphics supported on here memory is ddr5 up to 5200 megahertz dual channel and that can go to a maximum of 64 gigabytes this is the 32 gigabytes dual channel uh, version here also we have storage there's plenty of room for storage on here quite a different array of speeds so we'll explain that a little bit later on in the video and also we have some communication ports which we've just gone through it does come with windows 11 as well and there's the dimensions on the bottom there so you can pause the screen and read this at your own leisure but we're going to go through and take a look inside. So one of the actual slots can be converted into a U.2 uh, slot with this little card here. And you can slot it in here and this will be able to convert this. So that is quite a nice little unique uh, added option for you right here. But you can see here there is two M.2 slots here. One here and one here. This one is populated with the OS with the PCI Express uh, 4.0 times four and the other one is also a pci express 4.0 times four as well but the other ones there's two more on the other side and i'll show you those so you're getting four n.2 slots on here which is absolutely incredible inside a small mini pc so this fan here is cooling the m.2 slot here with the os on it which is your pci express 4.0 times four here 
On the other side of the mini PC, we do have this heatsink here. I can remove the screws here. There's two screws holding this down. And under here, you will have another two M.2s and also your memory, which is covered with this uh, silver tape. If I can get this out here, let me just lift this out so we can uh, have a look here. There is some thermal pads on here as well. Now, I'm not going to strip this right the way down. If you want to see a complete tear down, let me know. But this is your heatsink with two thermal pads. Now, on here, you can see your CMOS on there. Now, this one right here is PCI Express 4.0 times 1, and this one is PCI Express 3.0 times 4. So slightly different speeds on these two. And I think that confused quite a few people, but there is a diagram on their website, which I'll show you a bit later on. Here is your RAM underneath this uh, silver tape. It's like a heat uh, shield on here to protect it and keep it nice and cool. I'm not going to tear all this off to have a look, but this is crucial memory. I'll show you where you can tell without taking all this apart. This does have a full socketed CPU on here as well, which has an, a Ryzen 7 8700 uh, G, which means you can put in different CPUs. And I'll also show you a chart of that a little bit later on in the video as well, if you're interested. So plenty of upgradability with this mini PC, as you can expect. So this could actually be a gaming system. And you've also got that Oculink as well, which you can use, which I'll make another video, which means you can put an external GPU on this as well using that. And that will be an interesting video to make as well. Now, also, what I can tell you is we can upgrade these CPUs here as well uh, with different versions. I think this actually goes up to a Ryzen, the 9000 series when they're released. So it will slot in here, So which is really useful. Here is the main chart here for the CPU support here. Now, because we have a standard socketed CPU in here, it's not a surface mounted CPU. It's actually a full socketed CPU, which means you can remove it and replace it, which means you can upgrade it. And you can also see it does give you the actual drive M.2 drive layouts there and what they are and what speeds they are. They've also got some other information on their website. This is on the American website, I think, that I grabbed this. And the other one was on the Chinese or Japanese uh, website. Uh, but really, uh, it's not that easy to find. You have to go digging around and have a look if you really want to find what the speeds are. Because that's always a concern with a lot of these devices uh, with the speed. Now, if you're worrying about the price, this is the price for the actual standard, bog standard, uh, bare bone system. With no CPU, it's only £239. Looking at the speeds of the operating system drive in here, you can see the sequential reads is 4,786.35 and the writes is 3,879.86. If you're wondering what that drive was without tearing it down, you can see here it was the Kingston drive one uh, terabyte drive here and it gives you the model number right there that is the actual drive that is being used for uh, the operating system again you can swap this out if you wanted to for a larger drive you can put very large capacity drives in this and use it for some sort of home lab let's do a video playback here for jellyfish 400 mbps 4k ultra hd hevc 10-bit file silky smooth playback and so many pcs actually struggle to play this file but you can see it plays it really, really well. I'm just going to quickly stop and start it and drag it along. And you can see it instantly plays no problems whatsoever on playback for 4K files. Let's take a look here at the next test that I want to do here. And I'm going to go ahead and play video 4K playback and do streaming here. And you can see there was a couple of frame drops here, nine frame drops at the very beginning, which is quite standard. And again, once it stabilizes, you get the odd one or two drop in during playback but you don't really notice any stuttering whatsoever and that's pretty normal for a playback of 4k files looking at the idle temps here you can see i've just finished playing that file and again it's starting to cool down right now it's at 44.5 and you can see 43.2 42.5 and it's dropping so that is a really cool idle system i'm just going through the cpu and the memory here ddr5 as we mentioned right here and also the memory in here, which I did wanted to tell you about without tearing it down. You can see it is crucial uh, technology memory inside here. It does give you the part number as well if you want to do a search for that and you can get the full readout of what that memory is. But it is good memory and a good drive in here as well. So what I wanted to do here is quickly do a quick bench test on here to see if we get any thermal throttling or what sort of temps we can expect under load. So we're going to put this under a stress test here 
And again, I will run other tests as well. But you can see this is why I like Minis Forums uh, mini PCs so much because the cooling is really, really good. I've never seen one of their mini PCs thermal throttle or cause issues. You can see right here, we're not getting any thermal throttle in at all or any other issues with uh, max uh, temperatures or anything like that. We're not getting any issues at all. It's really keeping it cool. 78.8, 79.2. Remember, I'm constantly running this benchmark as well. And again, you're really never going to probably put this mini PC through this sort of torture test, really. It's never going to probably reach this sort of peak performance in its life. So let's go ahead and stop that. And I'm going to run Cinebench here. And I just want to check here to see what the thermals are like under uh, Cinebench because sometimes mini PCs will start to cause massive problems when you run Cinebench. And you can see here we're not having any issues whatsoever. Temperatures are 55.6 and no thermal throttling whatsoever here. So super impressive by this mini PC. And that was the multi-core score of 15,118 points which is pretty impressive. Now, remember, again, this can be used for many different things. You can have multi-monitor uh, display. You can use it for some gaming, and you can also use it for video playback, video editing, pretty much anything. Under the single core score, we got 1,738 points as well. And as I mentioned, the multi-core score is right above that, which I've already talked about. And that's on Cinebench R23. Now, as you'd expect... Uh, with this particular type of system, it has a proper BIOS here. We can go through here and you can see you've got some regular stuff which you can change. Inside here, I want to change the GPU settings here. Now, remember, I've been doing this under stock uh, playback, so I've not changed any of it. But I'm going to go into here and change the GPU uh, memory settings here as well. But you can see there is lots of settings you can mess around with. Now, normally on mini PCs, this is all completely locked down. And they don't like you tampering with stuff. But inside this one, you can actually go in here and you can have a little fettle to see whether you can get it to the way you like it. We got the TJ Maxx set to 90. We also have the system configuration set to auto, but you can change the wattage on that as well. Inside the advanced section right here, there is also AC power loss options and there's some other options here. But what we're looking for is we're going to go into the advanced section here and we're going to come down and take a look at some of the advanced options because I want to change the GPU uh, memory settings on this uh, mini device. So let me go ahead and have a configure. Now, we do have 32 gigabytes of RAM in here, so I reckon I'd be able to get away with setting that to 8. I think by default, I think it's set to uh, 2 gigabytes, but I'll let you know as soon as I get there. So let's go ahead and make a change on that. So we need to go to the advanced setup here. So go to advanced setup, then AMD CBS, click on that one there. And then we need to go into MBIO common options. And then from here, we can then go into the GFX configuration. Inside here, the iGPU configuration is set to specify, which is set to two gigabytes out of the box. Again, if you want to make changes here, you can do. The UMA game optimizes four gigabytes, but if you want to go into specified, you can then specify your own memory settings here. I'm going to set this to 8 gigabytes, which I think is plenty for this mini PC. And again, with that setting right there, we should be okay to play some games. And I'm going to go ahead and show you that right here. I'm not going to do too many games because I want to do a separate video. But again, you have got an 8700G here, which is plenty capable of playing uh, AAA listed games. So I'm going to be going ahead and doing F1. And we'll also do the Mad Max game, and that will be that. So let's see how F1 plays. Now, I think this is F1 2023 or 2022. I think I can't remember. But again, it's pretty smooth, as you'd expect, because we've set that to 8 gigabytes of memory. And it's going to be plenty to play games like this. You can see it's pretty smooth, no jerkiness. I'm not sure what the FPS is. That's always going to come down to graphic settings and screen resolutions. I'm running this on a 4K TV. I think it's uh, running at a lower resolution. And some of the settings have been set by the game itself when I plugged it into the PC. I've not touched them at all. That's out of the scope of this video. I'll do that in a separate video when I'm doing the eGPU. 
So as you can see here, these are the settings that it set for me. It did do ray tracing uh, quality to medium and a bunch of other stuff set to low and ultra low here. Again, I just want to point out that this item was sent to me by Minis Forum. All my opinions are my own. No one is reviewing this video before it's released and it's not a sponsored video. Now this one is Mad Max again, and I'm still running it on the same 4K TV. And I've not tweaked the settings whatsoever because I wanted to just see what it was like to play the game straight out of the box and let the GPU and PC set the graphics settings for me. And you can see here, it's playable. And again, I can go into the settings and graphics settings and tweak this and make this even more playable to get a little bit more FPS uh, to make it much more playable for myself if I wanted to. And again, that's not going to be any use to you because you're not going to know what I'm doing. But I will show you uh, the graphics settings that it set for me straight out of the box. But I think it's pretty impressive nevertheless. I think uh, this mini PC is going to be great for people that do want to play some games that also maybe want plenty of storage. Maybe you want to set up uh, maybe, uh, say, for instance, a home lab or something like that. Or maybe you want a Plex server or something. It will be useful for that as well. These are the graphic settings. You can see the presets were set to high. The resolution was 3072 by 1728 at 60 hertz. V-Sync was on, and we also have texture filtering on as well at six, and some of the shadows were high. So I could have turned some of these down and had even more better playback experience. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. I will be doing another video on this product uh, with the eGPU. My name is Ben Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.